Hello friends and welcome to the Architecture Enthusiast and to the Wiesenhof Housing Estate created in 1927 in Stuttgart, Germany. Now in its 90th anniversary year, the radical project provoked outcry, admiration, and changed how we live, says Dominic Lutyens. A mixture of mockery, bemusement, and admiration was the response when in 1927 an architecture exhibition opened in Stuttgart. It's hardly surprising that it proved bewildering to many. Organized by the city of Stuttgart and the Deutsche Werkbund, an association of German artists, architects, designers, and industrialists, the Wolfenung, meaning the housing exhibition, showcased radically innovative domestic housing. The central project for the exhibition comprised cuboid and flat roof buildings and was way ahead of its time. Its centerpiece was a real estate project called Wiesenhof. Built on sloping ground to the north of the city, this comprised 21 shockingly cuboid flat roof buildings, including apartments as well as terraced and detached houses. These were generously glazed, the huge windows drawing natural light into their open plan interiors. The dwellings were designed by 17 European modernist architects, including Le Corbusier, his cousin Pierre Genedet, Walter Gropius, and Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, who masterminded the project as artistic director. Although famous now, these revolutionary architects were almost unknown then. The modernist approach of the architects was a radical departure from ornament and tradition. Originally, two factions of architects vied to showcase their work. One group were architects with a deep connection to the region's architectural history, but the modernists, led by Mies van der Rohe, won the battle and persuaded the city to help finance the show. Many locals were irritated, bemused, or simply laughed at what they saw. Stuttgart's population had never been exposed to such startling modern design on such a large scale before. Though in 1924 the city had played host to the Deutsche Werkbund exhibition Forma ohne Ornament, Form Without Ornament, which displayed both handcrafted and industrially manufactured design. Wiesenhof, however, was much larger. And enthralled to the so-called machine age, its exhibitors wholeheartedly embraced mass production and prefabrication. The houses showcased interior design and furniture, while nearby a construction site put the spotlight on the materials and machinery needed to create the architecture. In the city center, another arm of the exhibition displayed pared-down products that reflected the project leader's zero tolerance for decoration or historical styles. In addition, a show called International Plan and Model Exhibition of New Architecture highlighted other cutting-edge items, photos, drawings, or models that Van der Rohe and his collaborators considered important and which lent credence to Wiesenhof's audacious designs. Ludwig Mies van der Rohe's elegant apartment building at the Wiesenhof estate was the exhibition's centerpiece and remains a modernist classic today. The artistic director had only invited avant-garde architects to take part. The team sheet included Austria's Joseph Frank, Belgium's Victor Bourgeois, Germany's Hans Scharoun, Peter Behrens, and Bruno Taut, Swiss architect Pierre Genaret, cousin of Le Corbusier, and Johannes Jacobus Pieter Oud, and Mark Stamm from the Netherlands. Van der Rohe also oversaw the budgets and construction. He told the architects how much money was in the pot for each project, then gave them free reign, says Kramer. He didn't want to lay down rules as he believed this would conflict with his aim of finding new forms. In the event, these included movable partitions that could allow a space to be subdivided easily 
and flexibly into two or three rooms. Floor to ceiling internal glass walls and linoleum flooring in one continuous color. The furniture was equally avant garde. Van der Rohe's classic Wiesenhof chair with a tubular steel cantilevered frame was created especially for the show. Wiesenhof wasn't limited to aesthetic experimentation, however. The show was also concerned with progressive social ideas, says Friedman Geschwing, a Stuttgart based architect and town planner who initiated the creation of the museum. For example, it showed flats for single professional women. Despite the arguably elitist nature of its architect's sensibilities, Wiesenhof extended many of the democratic ideas that lay at the heart of the Deutsche Werkbund. One goal was to build mass housing cheaply for those who couldn't afford expensive homes, says Kramer. Another was to demonstrate that, thanks to prefabrication and modern materials, housing could be built quickly. Construction of the first house started in January 1927 and took five and a half months to complete. Some of the exhibition's design concepts, such as maximizing daylight with large windows and orienting buildings towards the sun, ideas now generally accepted, were partly determined by fashionable medical theories, according to Karen Kirsch, author of the book Wiesenhof Siedlung, which focuses on the experimental housing built for the Deutsche Werkbund in 1927. Light and air were supposed to penetrate the transparent facades, shining into the furthest corners and killing germs, she describes. Barons, for one, designed apartments with balconies or roof terraces where people who were ill could take the fresh air while tucked into bed. If in the 19th century an attempt was made to imitate aristocratic living, now heavy curtains and dried bouquets were seen not just as irrelevant, but as dust traps and breeding grounds for germs. The project was a manifesto of the modern architectural movement, says Anya Kramer. The show was widely covered by the international press. Depending on the critics' sympathies, the reports were negative or positive. Many locals were irritated, bemused, or simply laughed at what they saw, but local artists with a more modern outlook were in favor of the exhibition. After it had finished, the houses were to be rented out by the city of Stuttgart, which owned them, and tested in real living conditions. In 1928, many were displayed as drawings or models in a traveling exhibition which by 1930 had toured 14 European cities. Its influence was extensive principles. In 1944, it was partly destroyed by Allied bombings. It was then badly neglected in the post-war era, and today only 11 buildings remain. Yet for many of the architects involved, the exhibition proved a launchpad for their careers and a lifesaver. It gained them a reputation in the United States, so when they went there to escape Nazi persecution, they were welcomed with open arms, says Kirsch. Today, Wiesenhof's importance has been recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site.